before we start this video at large, thank you to BRBR, BR, Rodrigo, Vanessa, Dr. 25th, Wang Zeng, Sean, Berard, and Cody for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay guys, I want you to start off by making a 3D cube in the scene. Drag it to the entrance of your boss room. Uncheck the mesh renderer box and make it so it is a trigger like the picture has shown right now. And the reason I'm showing you a picture is because my monitor's HDR settings messed up the first 10 seconds of this recording, but now we're back. So as you can see, I'm just going to rename this right now to Event Collider. And let's add a script to it. And we're going to call this Event Collider. Uh, we'll call it Begin Boss Fight. So this is essentially just going to be a trigger to let another script know that we've started an event. All right, so we're also going to need uh, another script alongside of this one. So let's create an empty game object now. And we're going to make this game object and call it World Event Manager. Let's add a component to this. Reset the transform first. Let's just call it World Event Manager. And this script will control all things in the world that can happen, like boss fights, spawning in items, etc., etc. And it will be synced to your player's save data in the future. So every time your player loads in, it will load things in the scene depending on your player's save data. So I'm just going to put a double slash here for a fog wall variable, which we're going to do in the next video. And then right below that, I'm actually going to put my namespace down first. Namespace SG. There we go. Now right below that, I'm just going to say boss health bar, UI boss health bar rather. And we're just going to call that boss health bar. Okay. Now, what are we going to do? Well, we need to make sure when you walk through here, Let's also call upon the enemy boss manager for the next video. Uh, we're going to trigger the boss fight automatically. So let's make a public bool for boss fight is active. And another public bool for boss has been awakened. And then a, another public bool for boss has been defeated. So we're going to have one boss per world and one manage, one world manager per world. So here we go. We can put a double slash here. I'm going to say this is basically saying is currently fighting the boss. So the player is currently fighting the boss. This next one will be like if you woke up the boss, you played the cutscene, and it's all okay, but maybe you died, so we're not going to play the cutscene anymore. So we're just going to say woke the boss slash watch the cutscene, but probably died during the fight if this is active and the boss has not been defeated. And then the boss has been defeated. So you'll notice in Dark Souls, uh, sometimes you get to see like the boss get up or a cutscene will play or some event will happen. But then when you come back after you die, the boss will just be standing there and waiting for you. So that's why we have an awakened, um, we'll say, state. So then on awake here, we're going to say boss health bar equals find object of type UI boss health bar because there should only be one boss in the scene. If you're doing multiple, you'll have to set it up to support multiple. It would not be very hard at all. I'm just going to make this public so I can make sure these variables are calling and I want to check some things too off video. So these don't need to be public right now. All right, so next let's say public void, and then we're gonna say activate boss fight. Now what are we gonna do when we activate the boss fight? Well, obviously we're gonna say boss fight is active is equal to true. And then we're gonna say boss has been awakened is equal to true. And then we're gonna say boss health bar. And what we need to do now is we need to set it up so we can set UI health bar to active. So that would make the health bar appear in the scene. And then we would activate our fog wall or walls if you have multiple, which we will do in the next video. All right, so right below that, we're gonna say public void boss has been defeated. And what you wanna do down here is just say boss fight is active is false and boss has been defeated equals true. Now we're actually gonna tie this in and do some more work on the player death sequence because we're gonna have to make a death screen and reload the level and really mess with the uh, the world manager a lot more in the future. So we're gonna say boss fight is active is equal to false and that looks good. Okay, so now we have the protocol for activating our boss fight. However, we need to call that protocol from another script. So here on this, uh, this event collider begin boss fight, we're going to use the collision box we have placed on this as a trigger and if it detects a player passing through it it will then begin the boss fight so we're going to say we're going to call upon the world event manager first up here so a variable of type world event manager we'll name it world event manager 
And then on awake, we'll say world event manager equals find object of type world event manager because there should only be one in the scene unless you're doing multiple per scene, but you'll have to set that up differently. So let's do on trigger enter. And now we're going to say if other, as in other collider, dot tag is equal to player. So if you are the player of the scene, then we're just going to say world event manager dot activate boss fight. Okay, excellent. Now that should work as intended, but we have to do a few other things. See how our boss here has this health bar. Well, let's get rid of that. And that's going to give us an error because we don't want our boss having a tiny health bar when he already has this massive one below the screen. So let us know he's a boss. But you'll see you'll get an error, so we'll double click that. Now on start, right here, this is under enemy stats. Let's quickly make a bool under enemy stats. And the bool is just simply is boss. So this will just be stating is this enemy a boss character. And then on start, we're going to say if is boss is not true. So if we're not a boss character, let's set our health to the health bar. And if we are a boss character, let's not do that. If you wanted to, you could even call upon setting the boss's uh, health bar on this start functionality as well, but I'm not going to do that. So let's tick the is boss checkbox right here now. And now we have to do a couple of things. We walk here now, you'll see the health bar pops up. looks great. Cool. However, if we do damage to this man, we're not going to update the health bar. So and we get an error as well. So down here, since he doesn't have a health bar, there's nothing to update. So we're going to say, um, if you're not a boss, as stated before, we're going to update the regular health bar. But if you are a boss, let's call upon our enemy boss manager variable up here. And we'll call that on awake. And if an enemy doesn't have this on them, it won't matter because we won't be using it and you won't get an error. So if we do have an enemy boss manager, we will get component because it sits on the same game object as the enemy stats. And then down here where take damage happens, what we're going to say is if you're not a boss character, let's just update our health and set the health bar to our current health. However, if you are a boss character, then we're going to say enemy boss manager. And let's make a function now for referencing that. So let's go over here. And then right below here, all we're going to say is public void update boss health, or you can even say set boss health bar, whatever you want to call it. And then we're actually going to use a function we already have, but we're going to pass an int first for our current health. So we're going to be fetching the current health from the enemy stats. And then we're just going to say boss health bar dot set current health, I believe it's called. Yes, it is set boss current health and we'll pass the current health. All right, that looks good. Now let's go back here. And let's just say enemy boss manager dot update. Whoop, not set update. Yep, update boss health bar. And pass the current health. All right, that should be good. Now every time we do damage, it should update the health bar and the boss sequence should start automatically. All right, I'm actually we're gonna say else if, just so we don't get an error message here. We're gonna say else if is boss and uh, enemy boss manager is not null. So we have to have the script for this call. Okay, looks good. Let's save that. And if we jump into the game here now and hit play, I'm actually going to change his health to uh, to a lot higher. So it's 10 times normal enemy. Now, if we go in here and we go through this wall, I'm going to roll at him here. He hits me. Oof. Okay. Let's hit him twice. There we go. His health is now updating on the bottom of the screen. Cool. Awesome. So we are one step closer to concluding our boss sequence. In the next episode, we're going to cover fog walls that lock you in and out during a boss fight. And we may start jumping into the phase sequencing. So if you get the boss to have health, you will begin phase two, et cetera, et cetera. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment. It does help the YouTube algorithm gods. It does help appease them. And if you're feeling super generous, check out my Patreon below. And I will see you guys in the next video.